Good morning, Mr. Tawa. Welcome to Berlin and welcome to this year's ITB. How would you describe the focus of your work and why do you think it is important for the industry? Well, we think it's really important for the industry to understand what might be coming next so you can prepare for opportunities, for shocks, for challenges. And my work as a futurist is to help organizations understand those factors that could shape the future, to understand how those factors could come together, economic, social, technological, political, environmental, and to see how they might come together in different possible scenarios. And then to help leaders in industries like tourism think about how do we respond? How do we prepare for those things? How do we develop the talent as leaders to navigate us through uncertainty? And how do we make sure our organizations are learning fast enough to be able to deal with whatever comes next? Okay. So what is the key message uh, you would like to convey at this year's ITB convention? What are the, uh, the key insights you want the audience to take home with them? So three uh, big things. I think the first is we're facing the combination of a number of shifts. So we see geopolitical crises uh, and economic uncertainty. The second thing we see is real technological disruption, particularly from things like generative AI and what will follow that within a couple of years, which is artificial general intelligence that effectively will look as though it's as smart as humans. And the third thing and the track I'm speaking on is around diversity and inclusion. And for me, there's three different things. One is the diversity and inclusion of the staff in the industry. The second is around the travelers who are coming who want their needs catered for in a more and more diverse and inclusive way. And the third big one, which no one in the industry talks about, is that more than half of the planet will never travel. Half of the population globally earns less than $7 a day. So they will never travel. The industry doesn't really do anything about them, but there's a huge opportunity from a social perspective and an economic perspective to create propositions that you take to them. So that I'm going to be talking a lot about how do we serve that group who most people don't pay much attention to. So there's 50% that means social projects or what kind of things? That are? can be a combination of taking physical experiences to them. It can be using technology to give them virtual reality experiences of other destinations. It can be creating metaverse experiences where you take the technology for them to access it. It can be as simple as videos, but it's trying to find creative ways of giving people some of that experience that you and I get when we travel, uh, some of that dopamine hit that we get from incredible experiences. And in that terms, technology leads the way. Well, technology is one enabler, but we can also create physical experiences. So we can have portable theme parks. We can have portable attractions that we take to them. Uh, we can think creatively about how do we take those interesting tourism, hospitality, leisure experiences to people who would never otherwise have it. Maybe we put a tiny hotel on the back of a truck. We've seen that before for festivals. But it's really thinking imaginatively about those who may never have the wealth to take a normal holiday. How do we give them some of that experience? Thank you. I'm already coming to my last question. Um, The motto of this year's ITB convention is pioneer the transition in travel and tourism together. From your perspective, what is the biggest challenge of this tra transition and how, how can it be tackled? Well, I don't think there's one challenge. Uh, I think the first challenge is the transition of leadership. The industry needs to bring in the next generation and it needs to be as diverse and inclusive uh, as the world around it. We can't wait Uh, 30 to 200 years, which are the estimates for when women will reach parity to men in terms of positions at the top of organizations. And I think when business leaders stand up and make a commitment in public to say, 
by 2030, 30% of our leaders will be women. They should be embarrassed for saying that. Can you imagine them going home and talking to their family and saying, by 2030, the women in this family will be allowed to speak 30% of the time. They would be kicked out of their homes. And yet we're willing to do that. So the first big challenge, I think the big transition is moving to a more inclusive, diverse organization from the leadership down. That's where you set the model. The second thing, and the transition is to get people using the technology, generative AI. We can save 15 to 75% of the time in the organization by using these simple, easy to use tools to take away the repetitive and to do the creative and everything in between. That's a massive transition and it's a mindset change. The third transition is around the environment. Uh, right now, we are certainly as an industry putting more money into building the new than we are in terms of protecting the environment and reducing our environmental footprint. There's a question about whether all of the new construction and development is overall increasing the industry's environmental footprint by more than we're decreasing it. And I think, the, again, the industry should be embarrassed that after the pandemic, when everyone put their prices up quite significantly, no one said, let's add two euros or three euros to the price of a hotel room or of a flight and put that money into a collective fund to create environmental projects around the world that would actually absorb the carbon we're emitting. So that's a massive transition we should have done. No one would have complained. And the final transition, I think, is this transition to uh, really thinking about how do we create mind-blowing experiences? How do we make sure that whether you're staying in a no-star hotel to a six-star property, whatever airline you're flying on, and this doesn't mean spending a lot of money on the physical, this means the investment in people. Because what we remember are the people and the, the human experience. And we can create exceptional experiences if we train and empower our staff to really take responsibility for making sure that the passenger, the hotel guest, the leisure experience participant all have a fantastic five-star experience, whatever they've paid for it, because it's about the people they've dealt with that makes them feel so special. Thank you very much. My pleasure. That Thank was you. very insightful. Thank you. Thank you.